This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training in Book 3. In Chapter 2, this is Section 1, Last and Concluding Part. Living in community demands and requests part two you cannot shift and change circumstances you cannot cover over things and compromise a little here and there you have to find the total commitment to no compromise whatsoever you must take a stand it is time to take a stand. That stand can seem awfully steep. It seems easier to pick away at things in the world that you want to be different than to change your thinking. It seems easier to compromise here and there than to have a transformation of mind. When faced with a choice between compromising and having a total mind overhaul, it seems easier to choose compromise. It seems easier to not take a stand than to take a stand. If you stopped someone on the street and asked them if they have ever considered what the purpose is to everything they are doing, you would probably hear answers like, Yes, I have had those thoughts from time to time but I do not let them occupy my mind very often. What is the point? They are unanswerable anyway. Nobody has ever found an answer for them, so why entertain them? That was my experience when I was in college and seemed to be searching and questioning. I had the sense that there had to be something much deeper yet it seemed fruitless and pointless at times. It seemed easier to compromise. Just go ahead, David. Work on your urban planning project. Go through the motions. Do what everyone else is doing. Survive. Get the job done. Keep the wheels rolling. Go forward. But these questions would not go away. Because I did not want them to go away. I really believed that there had to be something that was a permanent or a lasting solution. That is where we are coming to now. You ask why you would want to choose to perceive me as not cooperating. Why you would choose to perceive misery or even just irritation. It is because the mind would rather choose a compromise approach. It would rather use something on the screen to justify its feeling of unworthiness, lack and guilt. Friend, even though it knows that it is going to be painful? David, yes. Friend, because it believes that the alternative is more painful than the compromise? David, yes, the alternative is obliteration to the deceived mind. Friend, so I hold on to the delusion that if I get what I want, the pain will go away. If I get my friend to be cooperative or get people to do things my way, then I will not be in pain. David, we think I am certainly not choosing this consciously. That is something often said in relation to sickness. There is this extensive discussion about what is conscious and what is unconscious. As if somehow what is unconscious is such a powerful ego thing that it just dictates everything. Here is what Jesus says about that. Defenses are not unintentional, nor are they made without awareness. They are secret magic wands you wave when truth appears to threaten what you would believe. They seem to be unconscious, 
but because of the rapidity with which you choose to use them. In that second, even less, in which the choice is made, you recognize exactly what you would attempt to do and then proceed to think that it is done. Who but yourself evaluates a threat, decides escape is necessary, and sets up a series of defenses to reduce the threat that has been judged as real. All this cannot be done unconsciously. But afterwards your plan requires that you must forget you made it. So it seems to be external to your own intent. A happening beyond your state of mind. An outcome with a real effect on you instead of one affected by yourself. It is this quick forgetting of the part you play in making your reality that makes defenses seem to be beyond your own control. But what you have forgot can be remembered, given willingness to reconsider the decision which is doubly shielded by oblivion. Your not remembering is but the sign that this decision still remains in force as far as your desires are concerned. Workbook Lesson 136, Paras 3 through 5 You have a belief in separation. A belief is just a decision that has become unconscious, pushed out of the mind. That is how beliefs are made. They are just decisions. Decisions to separate from God. That decision is covered over and all the other, seeming decisions and maneuvers are doubly shielded by oblivion. The mind does not want to remember God. It is terrified of God. All its beliefs and decisions are part of a delay maneuver or a defense against going back to question that original decision. That is what the mind wants to forget. It really believes it has separated from God and it wants to forget that. It really believes it is at war with God, but it does not want to remember that. It says, forget the battle. Manual for Teachers, Section 17 Forget the size and strength of the enemy. It really believes God is a vengeful enemy that is going to come and get the mind for what it has really done wrong. So whether it is about someone being cooperative or respectful or doing things right, all the things that are on the surface are just part of the smoke screen to try to forget. Friend not wanting to trust the Holy Spirit is the same as not wanting to be mistaken about I, how I think I separated from God. David, either you are mistaken about the whole world as you constructed it, or you are right about it. If you are right about it, then you are also right about the little tiny you. That is really what it comes down to. The mind wants to be right. The deceived mind wants to be right about what it thinks it is, which includes the whole cosmos as it has been set up. All that is needed is that you look upon the problem as it is and not the way you have set it up. Text chapter 27, section 7 the way it is set up is that there is a world that is external to you. Ideas have left their source. There is a world of duality, conflict and competition. You seem to be teeny, unworthy and lacking. The problem is not seen as what it is. Just a false belief in the mind. All the solutions that the mind now seeks are solutions of the world. Including things like your comment. I am making just a small request. All I am asking is that. Friend, pause. It seems a lot easier to pause than to change my mind about my mind. David, 
You can tell by the charge you feel that it is not really a request. It is a demand. It is inconceivable to think of Jesus fully awakened making a request to one of his apostles and having a charge about it if they say no to his request. Can you see him saying, "You are my apostle. Do you know what I have just told you to do?" <laughs> do you know who I am? You know it would be ridiculous to think of Jesus doing that because that would be a demand instead of a suggestion or a request. If you make a suggestion and you feel a charge when that suggestion does not seem to be carried out, or you feel like someone is violating something, or being irreparable or bringing irreparable harm because they are not paying attention to the suggestion, then you need to turn it around. and look at your own mind is this truly a request or is it a demand friend i have to question if there is always the wish that my requests be honored i think there is always the wish that it be honored what is the point of asking for something unless it is something you think you do want it does not make any sense David You know when the requests are being made through you instead of by you to so to speak when the requests are not coming from a personal standpoint that are very help they are very helpful You do not feel a charge about requests or suggestions that are being made through you End of section 3